Uh, welcome, um, members of the Society of Architectural Historians and guests to the annual lecture of the Society of Architectural Historians of Great Britain. Um, on these occasions, we begin with um, presentations for our awards for the year before we move on to the annual lecture. Um, can I just say, first of all, I've been handed, so I will dutifully say, if people want to approach me afterwards, I have two tickets here, two free tickets, for architecture and food, World Monuments Fund-sponsored um, event at the Mayfair Theatre on Wednesday night at 7.30. Two free tickets with a glass of champagne. So, <laughs> thank you, Otto. Otto's coming up anyway, so maybe you can collect it then. Uh, the hours before the, um, this event of the annual lecture, we spend in committee, and uh, one of the things that uh, we talk about quite a lot um, is the support we give to students of various sorts and in various ways by helping students attend the annual conference, coming to our events, and most um, importantly in the last two or three years encouraging um, graduate students in the history of architecture to organize their own symposia which have been um, a huge success. Um, so our first two presentations tonight are about encouraging um, new students, newish, newish students as opposed to some of the older greyer people amongst us here to um, uh, encourage their work and to honor what they've done. And the second um, uh, year we're awarding the James Morris Prize for an essay on British colonial or post-colonial architecture um, is uh, to be presented to Emily Turner for her essay, um, A House Divided, 19th Century Evangelical Anglican Perspectives on Architecture for Missions. Emily... Um, uh, comes from Canada and is here in Great Britain doing a PhD at Edinburgh. She is one of the student uh, representatives for the Graduate <coughs> Forum that is happening um, next year. And um, so many of us have met her for the first time today on our education subcommittee. Also here tonight is Dr Simon Morris who donated this prize, um, who gave it in memory of his grandfather who worked with Herbert Baker in South Africa. So, Emily, will you please come forward to collect your cheque, um, and we're very delighted um, to award you this tonight. Our next presentation is for the Hawksmoor Essay Medal for 2014, uh, which was won by Richard Butler for uh, The Radicals in These Reform Times, Politics, Grand Juries and Ireland's Unbuilt Assize Courthouses, 1800 to 1845. Um, Richard is doing a PhD at St John's Cambridge on architecture, patronage and Protestant culture in Ireland, in the first half of the 19th century, supervised by Frank Salmon. Um, and he was one of the organisers of the Graduate Student Forum at Cambridge this year. Um, he's on a Fulbright um, scholarship at the moment at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and so can't be here tonight. So this is a, um, you know, that moment when Joan Crawford came up for Anne Bancroft, um, <laughs> when Betty Davis didn't win it. Um, <laughs> His great friend and colleague on that organising panel, Otto Samari Smith, is going to come up and receive this um, a check for the Hawksmoor Medallion. <laughs> and finally, our, our, our major prize to um, our um, Alice Davis Hitchcock Award. Um, for the um, best book on architectural history in the past year. Goes this year to um, Anthony Geraghty for his book, The Sheldonian Theatre, Architecture and Learning in 17th Century Oxford. Um, 
this outstanding book, and what I'm going to say is very much a, a, a coming together, a collective it, it, it's, uh, of the various things that the committee members felt were the strengths of this book. This outstanding book makes a significant contribution to British architectural history. Um, it's a monograph on a single building, um, but one, of course, of immense symbolic significance. It draws on a wide base of knowledge about the um, early Restoration era. It shows a fundamental understanding of the architect's mind at this point, the use of drawings to arrive at the final design, and the practicalities of getting the structure up. It does all those things that we are um, keen to keep alive in terms of the processes of doing architectural history. But it does much more than that, because it looks both backwards and forwards in time. It provides a fully argued discourse on the Laudian period and on earlier expectations of what this building, this key symbolic building in Oxford, was for and what it represented. And it goes on to discuss how then the building was customised by its users. Um, and I think that is something that we very much come to see as part of what we should be doing as architectural historians. There's a, there's a making, and then the use transforms what the building is all about. So there's a strong sense here of a building like this being but one stage in a complex evolution about Oxford University and the place of ceremonial within it. The book has a very convincing overall argument about how we should interpret the Sheldonian as the restoration reassertion of, and to quote um, Anthony's text, a passionate commitment to church and crown, as well as of a particular humanist model of learning. Um, the, later, the latter argument is built upon recent scholarship that reassesses the Royal Society and the debates between the new empirical science and the scholarly encyclopedic tradition of Oxford. The way in which this book repositions Wren seems um, very convincing and relevant as a scholarly contribution and reveals much about how architecture was accommodated within 17th century academic thought and about the university's ceremonial life and relationship with the church. Not a word is wasted in this book. It's very, very precisely written and every uh, word counts. Um, and the approach is fresh, and we think this book will prove of lasting significance, and Anthony will surely go on to situate this work in his wider experience of Wren um, and the late 17th century. The book benefits, as so many of our books have, from the design expertise of Gillian Malpas and the um, great support from Yale University Press to make sure it's both an elegant book and one with wonderful images. So, Anthony, will you please come forward? Thank you. Uh, I shall be very brief, because you've come to hear Alice, not me. Um, but I'd just like to say a few words of thanks. Can I begin by thanking uh, Yale University Press and endorsing what Morris has just said? Where would we historians of British art and architecture be without the extraordinary and, I think, unrivaled generosity of the Paul Mellon Centre? Well, I, I dread to think where we would be. It would be somewhere very different. So I'd like to thank uh, those two neighbours up in Bloomsbury, uh, Mark Hallett at the Paul Mellon Centre, um, who was prepared to publish a short book on a single building, which is financially ruinous for a publisher. Um, so thank you to Mark for that, and again, thanks to Gillian Malpass um, for producing such a beautiful book. I felt anxious about the book, but as soon as I had it in my hands, I felt confident about it, and that was entirely due to the beauty of the design. Um, but the two things I wanted to say tonight, really, is to say how immensely proud and grateful I am to um, have received this award for two, for two real reasons, one personal uh, and one institutional, I suppose. Um, I was very privileged to receive funding from the British Academy to research and write this book, which meant that in 2009 I could completely decamp to Oxford um, and have the bliss of working in the Bodleian Library day um, after day without interruption. 
Um, and by the end of the year, I had um, a huge cardboard box full of notes. But meanwhile, my wife had been producing something altogether more uh, significant and important. And when we returned to York at the end of that year, frozen year, driving through the snow on the back seat, there was a tiny little baby two weeks old. <laughs> so I've always had a good feeling about this book. And uh, <laughs> it's been bound up with a very happy time in my life. Um, they say that the pram in the hall is the enemy of promise, but it wasn't for me. It was a huge inspiration, so I'd like to um, uh, repeat the dedication of the book and say how grateful I am to my wife, Jane, and to our son, uh, Miles. Um, my second point, um, the second thing I'd like to say um, is what a great honour it is to be the recipient of this award. Uh, awards are bestowed rather than received. And I'd just like to say what a huge privilege it is that, uh, for the fact that this award is being awarded by the Society of Architectural Historians. In other words, it's being awarded by my peers. So I would like to return the compliment and say how grateful I am and how much I admire the Society for all the splendid um, work it does. I'd also just very briefly like to uh, thank the Society of Architectural Historians of Great Britain with a small s, not that they're necessarily the different things with the society with a small s and a big s, but I'd just like to say in the 15 years that I've been an architectural historian, I have experienced nothing but support and encouragement from my fellow architectural historians. And I would particularly like to thank my fellow historians of the 17th century um, England. I'd like to pay tribute to Gordon Higgert, who's sitting over there, the most generous and least egotistical of scholars, who's been a huge inspiration to me over the years. I'd like to thank Christine Stevenson for being quite so brilliant and encouraging the rest of us to up our game. Um, and I'd like to thank Kerry, um, Kerry Downs, who benignly and wisely presides over us all, and long may he continue um, to do so. Um, but mostly I'd like to thank the Society with a capital S. Um, I'm a huge admirer of this society. What I admire about it most is the multiple constituencies from which the membership is drawn. I think that's what gives it its richness um, and why it's a society where I never doubt that it's a society of people who love buildings and are committed to the historical explication of those buildings. So to uh, be recognised by such a society is a very great honour and I'm very grateful to the society. Thank you.